Welcome back to another episode of Osprey Observer TV. I'm your host, Johnny Torres. With me, as always, Marie Gilmore. And as they say, great music never dies. And right here in Brandon, there was a heavy metal rock band about 30 years ago who had seen a rebirth of their fame. Let's check out this amazing story right now. Well, welcome back. We've got a really fun interview today. A few weeks ago, I was just sitting, minding my own business, and an email came in about a heavy metal band from Brandon that had sort of resurrected itself and performed in Germany recently. So, of course, we had to get this story, and Ed Aborn is a local Balrico resident who was a member of the band Siren, who had some success, had a record contract years ago, and was able to come back around and start recording again and performing again, and we're so excited to hear this story. So, welcome, Ed. Thank you so much for being with us today. Tell us about Siren. Sure. Yeah. So as you mentioned, we are from Brandon. We're old school. You know, we put the old in old school when it comes to Brandon heavy metal. We started around 1981. So it's actually 40 years ago this year that we formed in Brandon. And with the exception of our bass player who was in Tal- from Tallahassee, we all grew up here, all went to Brandon High School back in the day when it was the only school. And um, so as you mentioned, we had uh, yeah, you know, we had put out some demos back in the early 80s and eventually got signed to a record contract around the mid 80s um, and recorded an album. And then, you know, things kind of, you know, we just we worked it for a couple of years, but it just didn't really seem to go anywhere. So we had to go along and move along with our lives and families and jobs, et cetera. And that's where we were, where we were for about 25 years until 2015 when uh, I got a series of messages on Facebook because I'm the only Ed Aborn on Facebook, so it was easy to find me. And they said, hey, are you the drummer from the old band Siren? And I'm like, well, yeah, that was me. And they're like, oh, we're big fans. And, you know, we can't believe we found you. We've been fans for 30 years. And this came in over the course of a month, about five of these from different parts of the world, Germany, South America, Russia. And I was like, you know, this is just weird. So they, they started asking questions about the early days of the band. And I'm like, you know what? I'm an IT nerd now. I'm a software engineer. So I type fast. So just for my own fun, I'm going to write down all of my memories from the band from back in the day. So I did that over the course of a few nights and ended up typing around 30 pages of remembrances and the story. And I'm like, oh, man, I accidentally wrote a book. So I decided to take the pictures from my own collection put that along with the text, format it into a PDF, just to an online book, and then put it out for those people and also for my friends. Well, long story short, the only person I couldn't get a hold of was our singer, Doug, because he's just always kept a low profile. And I hadn't spoken to him in, in at least 10 or 15 years. Um, but a friend of a friend had said, hey, I'm still in touch with Doug. Do you mind if I pass this book over to him? And I said, no, please do give him my cell phone number. So he did. We ended up connecting again. And once we connected, the word got out that he and I were talking and we got the offer to reunite and play at a big festival in Germany called the Keep It True Festival. And we said to the promoter, well, we haven't had a band in 30 years, you know, so there's that. But and and plus, I said, is anyone going to even care? You know, is anyone going to know us over there? And he's like, you're going to be amazed. He go, even the promoter was a fan of the band. It turned out we had a big following, especially over in Germany. So we got the invitation to play. And that's what the the film is about. It captured us on that journey because a friend of mine is a uh, he's a professional wrestler and actor and singer and author named Chris Jericho. And I had known I've known Chris for decades and I told him what was going on. He's like, no, this isn't happening. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, it's happening. And he literally said to me, he goes, I don't mean to be rude, Ed, but uh, is anyone going to care? I said, that's the same thing I asked the promoter. (laughs) So a day later, Chris called me back and he says, listen, I just can't stop thinking about this. He goes, whether it, the wheels fall off and it just, and it turns into a train wreck or it's the most heartwarming, entertaining story, triumphant story, it's going to be a good story. And it's one I want to see. You guys are in the middle of it right now, which is a rare chance to capture things as they happen. What would you think if I finance a film crew to go along with you and capture you on this whole thing, which is how we ended up with the film? 
Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, just having any sort of success in the music industry is of course, incredibly difficult and, uh, and something that very few people get to experience. Right. Did you know back then did, that you had a big following in <laughs> Europe and South America and some of these other countries? No, because back then it was very much, you know, it's, it's, there was no email. There wasn't anything. It was all sending tapes out, records out in the mail, sending sure. correspondence in the mail, you know, and we would work that hard. And we knew we had pockets of some fans in some of those countries. But, you know, it's small. We're only we're only interacting with with, uh, you know, handfuls of people here and there. And we get we would get coverage, though, in the magazines in those areas. But we would never really hear a lot from individuals. So it was a big surprise to find out there were thousands of people who wanted to see us, you know, after not having done anything in 30 years. So, yeah, it was it was amazing. So what was it like getting the band back together and, and playing? Was it like just coming back into old old tradition or was it was there a little a little bit of hesitation there and you kind of had to relearn each other's, you know, skills and habits? Right. It was it was kind of a mix. It was um, with the exception of our guitarist, Todd Grubbs, who has, has you know, a great music school here in Brandon. Um, he's a professional musician and has remained a musician throughout this entire time. The rest of us have not. Myself and my other guitarist, Hal Dunn, were both IT people. Our singer, Doug, has worked in the entertainment industry, working in arenas and everything, you know, over those years. Um, but, you know, we weren't professional musicians. So coming back together, it was a combination of kind of relearning the comfort of our own instruments and then learning how to work together again as a unit. And we, you know, we got together, we, we rehearsed for six or eight months to really pull it together. And then there was some, you know, as you, you'll see in the movie, there are some, obviously some, some roadblocks that we ran into. Our bass player ended up having to step aside, you know, a month before we were supposed to go because of health oh. problems due to his military service back, you know, over the past 20 years. And, you know, thankfully, just in one of the coincidences of the, the whole thing, which there are some that are just too much to be a coincidence. Um, our other bass player, who was an original bass player, had reached out while all this was going on, but not knowing what was going on. And we reconnected and that's captured on the film, me asking him if he'll be a part of the whole experience. And it's just, you know, it was incredible. But once we all came together as a unit and started again, it was very much like the old days, that energy was there and the excitement of knowing the mountain we were climbing and where, where we were going to. Uh, it was just the question of what's it, what's going to happen when we sit on the stage? Are we going to blank out and mess up or is it going to be, you know, as, as we hoped that that moment of, of triumph? So. Awesome. Well, and, and, hmm? uh, you know, uh, being on stage in itself is just an incredible experience. I've been fortunate to have some of that experience, but from your perspective, after so many years of not being on stage and then getting on stage at a festival, no less, right. um, what was that response like? I mean, did they know the songs? Did they know the words? I mean, to me, that's the favorite part of a concert is when everybody's singing along and everybody's right. really into it. What was, what, what was the crowd reaction like? Well, that's the thing that was just absolutely incredible because not only did they know the words and know us they were just so enthusiastic and literally within a few songs of our set as we'd finish the song you know to hear thousands of people just chanting siren siren spontaneously <laughs> and and i one of the things that uh i had done during the months that led up to this as i would practice my individual parts here in my own studio and just work through i would visualize okay what's this going to be like What's this going to be like? And I would picture that audience, you know, in front of me to to have that. And I told myself, listen, when you're in that moment, when that moment happens and you have that hour in front of that crowd, step back from the excitement, step back from everything and realize that what you're seeing is happening because that's the fulfillment of your dream. That's the fulfillment of the dream you had when you were 16 to 21 years old in the band. And it's happening, you know, have that 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 awareness when it happens and i did i can specifically remember playing a song and telling myself okay this is going on this is 18 year old you this is happening right now to the at then time 53 year old you 
you know, it's, it is going on right now. You're seeing people sing the words to you that you wrote in social studies class, you know, back, you know, in high school and it is happening. It was such a blessing to, to see that and to have that dream fulfilled because really, you know, I tell people that's what this movie is also about. The movie is not about siren. It's not about heavy metal. It's about what happens when a dream sneaks up on you in life and you get to live it even for a moment, because that's what happened. That's what happened to all of us. And I'm so thankful that it was captured, not only for us to be able to relive, but now for people to join us and watch as that unfolds for us. Because no matter what your dream was, if you dreamt to be a baseball player, if you dreamt to be a ballerina, you know, we all dreamt to be at the highest point of that game, whatever it was. Right. And most of us don't have the chance to live it, but we had the chance to live it for a moment and it was still as sweet. Well, Ed, I feel like we could absolutely talk all day long. There's so many more questions I have. I want to know everything, but really what it leads to is I need to go watch this movie. And I think it's a story of inspiration. I'm actually so excited now to go see it. I want to know the full story and then maybe we could come back and chat a little bit more about it. But let's tell everybody how to get a hold of this movie. Where can we see it? Okay. I think you guys also have an album out now. Yeah. People can listen to your music. How can people connect with Siren and feel a little bit of that nostalgia and that excitement that you guys have experienced? Sure thing. Um, all you have to do is go to sirenband.us on the web, sirenband, one word, dot us. And that'll take you over to our, our Facebook page, which is just Facebook slash Siren Band US. Um, and that's the best way to find us. You can actually type in Siren Band, two words now, in Google, and we'll come up at the top. So people are people are looking. Um, that's the best way to find us. As far as the movie, it's called I'm Too Old for This S Word. And, you know, and it's a heavy metal fairy tale. And um, you can find that. You can watch it on Amazon, on Sling, on Vudu, basically any of the major streaming platforms, YouTube, wherever you watch your streaming, you know, movies. Um, and it's also available like uh, from Amazon, the, you know, the Blu-ray and DVD for people who like physical. And this, you're right, this is, uh, this is our album that, uh, that we released in 2020. It's called Back from the Dead. And we just had such a great time preparing and then performing at this festival that we're like, you know what, let's go ahead and just record an album of new music. So that way, when the movie eventually comes out, people can look and hear what we sound like now as opposed to just all the stuff from, you know, when we were kids. So that's why we did the album. And just for fun, we have no dreams of fame or fortune, but it's just like, if anyone listens to this album, it's a win. So yeah, just Siren Band US and we love interacting with people. So please, if you reach out, you know, say hello and, you know, tell us you found out about it in the Osprey Observer. Absolutely. I've got my siren sway. I'm going to cherish it. I really appreciate it. I know you dropped off some treats for us. So I'm so excited about sharing this story. Thank you for being with us today and, and keep rocking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a great week.